This video is about the text command in OpenSCAD and uh, the text command is a 2D object. Uh, it looks a little 3D here but if you actually render that it's really just a, a 2D object and so you can uh, extrude it to make it 3D but we'll be going through mostly today just uh, what different things in the text command will do. Uh, so the first thing uh, we'll go ahead and look at a preview is that you basically just want to type text with whatever you want to say in quotes uh, in those parentheses and uh, same semicolon that you usually have on like spheres cubes uh, at the end and that will give you just this basic generic font that's the default uh, if you do want to change the font or the size then you have these options that are up here so uh, there's size, font, horizontal align, vertical align, spacing, direction, and the, the resolution, that FN number. Uh, so let's go and try a few of those. Um, let's just start with size. So the default is, I think, 10. Um, if you want something bigger, of course, you can um, raise it up, uh, size 20. Um, makes it much bigger. If you want to go down smaller, you can. Size 5 will make it really small. Uh, so that you just kind of play with till you get the, the size that you're looking for. Uh, so I'm just going to stick with just generic 10 on this one. Uh, the other thing that you can do is a uh, font. So I'll go ahead and change. I have a few fonts right here um, that I'll just paste in. Uh, so this font is, you know, typical Arial font. It looks pretty similar to the the default uh, it is slightly different but not by much uh, so that will give you your font type if you want to try something like a bold uh, then you have to put this colon and style afterwards so uh, putting in colon and then style equals bold uh, will make that bold not all fonts have the option to be made bold or italic or things like that. Uh, if you wanted italic, you could also do space italic. And it'll make that bold and italic. Or if maybe I don't want it bold anymore. Um, just italic like that. Um, but that does go inside the same quotes as the font type. So like Arial, colon, style equals, and then bold, italic, anything else that you might want there. Um, just separated with spaces. Uh, so that's the, the font. Uh, you can also try things like this. I'm going to do the elephant font. Uh, these are what's known as uh, serif fonts. They have these little you know things that stick out at the end on a lot of the letters. Uh, those are called serifs. Uh, these sometimes you will have a hard time if you're going to 3D print these little thin pieces right here or the little serifs that stick out. Uh, those can be a little bit troublesome just trying to get um, the slicer to recognize those and to actually put plastic in those spots. So just keep that in mind when you're choosing a font that um, these little thin areas may or may not get filled in exactly how you want on those guys. So uh, just something to keep in mind. I'm going to change this back to Arial and we'll just use the regular there. All right, so there's also things that you can do like horizontal align and vertical align on here. And let's go and do H align, horizontal. And what you want to type in there is basically either left, center, or right. And so let's, the default is left, so it's already left right now. Uh, if I put in center, then you can see that's just going to uh, change things to the center. If I want to put that back. Uh, so now it's centered on that axis, the Y axis right there uh, around my, my, my text. So if you ever want to just center something, you can always use H align as center. Uh, you can also do a right. And that will line things up on the right side. So now that D is lined up right there on the the axis and so um, like I said default is left if you want left it'll line up at the beginning of your word right at the end uh, center at the middle um, so let's go ahead and take that part out 
If you want to, say, move it vertically, then we can try the V align. And this one, there's a few options. One is top, and that also goes in the string quotes. Um, so top will line the top of your text on the x-axis. And so uh, just right along wherever the top is. So if you have uppercase, um, it'll go to the top of the uppercase. The lowercase will be down a bit from there. Um, but just whatever is the top object, um, that's what it'll align to. You can also do uh, center as well. And that will line up right through the middle of your object. And it does it does do the, the exact center, so like it's not in the center of the O, but it is in the center of the top of the O to the bottom of the P. So it's, it takes the very top and the very bottom of all the letters into account um, on center. You can also do bottom. Um, and so it'll do the, the bottom most edge, in this case the bottom of the P. Uh, that normally sticks under it'll just line that along the axis and so everything else gets raised up a little but the bottom of the P is is on the x-axis and then the default is usually baseline so if you want baseline then you can type baseline or just leave that option out and it'll default to baseline and that's normally what you would think of as as lining up uh, let's see spacing is another good one. So let's say I like this font, but I don't like how spread out it is, or I need it just a little bit closer. Um, then you can change this, the spacing. Uh, so spacing, let's say, is 1. Uh, that's going to be the, the default, everything still like it is. If you put in a 2, then that spaces everything out twice as far. If you put in something smaller, like 0.8, uh, and then that's going to bring everything closer together. And so uh, if you want to do you know, point 0.1, you can actually get overlapping letters. You know, it's really hard to tell where things are in that. Um, but usually just shy of, of 1, like point 0.8, point 0.9, if you want things just a little bit closer together, two decimal places, um, that will be what you want to, to squeeze stuff in. Some fonts you might also want to spread out, and you can do like 1.1, 1 .1, 1 1.2, uh, something like that. Uh, direction, this is in case you want things to go differently than just reading left to right. So direction, you will put in a string, and left to right is the default. That's usually LTR, and so not really any change on that. Uh, the right to left, just reverse it, is going to put all the letters backwards. It doesn't flip the letters around, but it does just put them like they usually appear, but backwards. Uh, so that's right to left. If you want to do um, top to bottom, TTB, and that'll do top to bottom. And now you got a vertical alignment uh, going down. So uh, that's useful if you want letters going down. You don't have to do each one individually. You can just say uh, direction is top to bottom. Again, you can reverse it bottom to top. So BTT. And that'll just line it up from the bottom to the top of the word. Um, same thing as right to left, but now vertically on those guys. Uh, so that's the direction. Default is left to right. If you leave it out, um, then it'll just go back to the left to right. Uh, the last thing is the the FN, which affects kind of the curve on these round letters. So if you want to, say, do FN equals, we'll do something really low, like 5, um, then that gets a lot more jagged, you know, along the, the edge, um, fewer faces on there. If you want to do something like 60, then it should get super smooth along there. Um, so that's just a matter of preference. How smooth do you want your letters? Uh, do you want them a little bit more blocky, a little bit more smooth? Um, the face number command can give you that. Uh, the last thing that I'll mention is the Unicode characters. Uh, so if ever you want to do a Unicode character, that goes directly into your text. And so 
this is something that you can look up on your own but basically they they start with you um, so you get this forward slash you and then there's a code that goes after it and in this case I'm going to use 03 C0 uh, and this is the Unicode for the the Greek character pi and so if I do that then I get open SCAD with that pi symbol at the end and again this is Arial font this will look differently depending on, on what font you want to use um, let's say I want to use something like Cambria um, then that'll look more like a pi symbol uh, these again though are going to have some of the serifs although they're a little thicker so that might turn out okay but you can just experiment with what font you like on, on which type of um, character uh, so that's the Unicode. If if there's ever any other Unicodes you want to use, you can uh, look those up on a list. Um, just put that in Google and, and get a list of Unicode characters. Or if you have something in mind, you can see if there's a character already assigned uh, to that. Um, Greek letters, things like that, we'll, we'll have some. Uh, so that's the base, basically it for the text command. Let's just do one more thing with that. Like I said, if you render this, this is going to be a 2D object right there. Uh, to get a 3D object, you just use the linear extrude command, uh, which I have a separate video for, so I'm not going to go into that in too much detail. But uh, linear extrude will just extrude that up. So now I have a solid object. A lot of times people use this uh, in a difference to take out characters or take out text and leave it kind of indented uh, you can also raise it up um, for like an embossing uh, but that's kind of up to you on on which way you want to go but um, linear extrude will give you that 3d object that you can then work with all right i hope you've enjoyed this video and um, that is the text command in openscad